What should you do immediately following completing a CMA? No, the answer is not get a glass of wine, although it's not a bad idea. Hi, my name is Joe Mangum. I'm a trainer, I'm an author, but more importantly, I'm your real estate coach, and that's the subject of this edition of Sell to Serve. So I just finished a research project where I went and got feedback from hundreds of real estate agents about their frustrations with CMAs and what they would like to see in a CMA class. Then I took the questions that were generated from the agents and I started interviewing appraisers. The result of that was my new live class, CMA Confidence in an Imperfect World, and by the way, we have coming soon an online tutorial on the CMA, so make sure to watch for that. And that is for people who aren't available in the area where we're teaching the live class, or number two, would just like to have the information so they can look at it repeatedly. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. I'm here to answer that question of what is it that you need to do immediately following a CMA? Well, the answer is to test the CMA. Hmm, okay, how? Well, there's actually four steps to testing a CMA. The first step is you're gonna go out and you're gonna find the closest competition to your subject property. I don't mean geographically, I mean, if a buyer were to look at your subject house, would they also look at these houses? They are your direct competition. In other words, active listings. Step two, you want to take the competitive listings and you want to put them in an order, in a list, by descending price order. So the most expensive house first to the least expensive house last, and then you would like to put some other information like what's their size, well, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. Step number three is to take your subject property. You've generated a range from your CMA. So what you wanna do is take the midpoint to that range. And what you want to do is figure out where, based on the price of the subject house, it would insert into your list, into your list of competition. And then step number four is to ask yourself this question. Does it compete? Does it compete? Based on this price, will it compete with these other houses? So why do we do this? Well, we do this because CMAs are largely histor historical and they do not take into account the competition that's on the market. And honestly, that is how the buyer's mind works. They contrast and compare houses. And so if you don't compare favorably, then the house is not gonna sell, even though the CMA said it was going to. Doing this activity is critical to making sure that you aren't taking houses that aren't sellable and to making sure that your seller is not selecting a bad price that's gonna make them sit on the house and start going through price reductions, which we know just creates a very bad situation for them ultimately. So what action should you take? The next CMA that you do, make sure to run this test on it by comparing it in the competition. All right, if you like our videos, please make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, linked, um, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, like me on Facebook, and hey, watch out for the new online tutorial. All right, and that's it for now, but also remember, it is the learners who are the earners.